Now, remember this load of wood from the other day? Yeah, I never got it unloaded. What a shocker. But I'm gonna have to, because we need to get back at this project and keep plugging away. Uh, yeah, because when we get busy spring time with farming and that, this kind of stuff's gonna be low priority, so we need to do it now. But before we do that, we're gonna have to do a little saw repair. So that's what we're gonna work on right after this. Welcome back. If you haven't seen my videos before, I'm Rossi Oliver Man. And in the last woodcutting video, I got a comment that at first glance I thought was quite strange, but then I realized that some people probably just don't know. So we're going to address that here. The comment that I got was, no wonder your saw doesn't cut good. The blade is upside down. Well, that is not exactly true, friends. The blade is the correct direction, but the bar is flipped over because when your bar starts to get wore, you can flip it over and go again for a while. It wears more on one side than the other. However, this one is pretty well done all the way around and it needs, the chain is dull. I mean, yeah, you can just practically run your hand over it, no problem. And so what the thing is, when these saws come, the smaller ones anyway, when they come brand new, they come with this narrower bar with like, I call it safety chain. It's green box chain. It's supposed to be where, you know, people don't get hurt on it because average Joe homeowner who doesn't probably have any business owning a saw anyway, gets it and then he ends up sawing his leg off because he doesn't know what he's doing. So they put on this chain that's not as aggressive and I don't like it. However, this saw isn't that old, really. I think it's four or five years old now. Uh, it might be older than that. But anyway, I wasn't going to replace the bar with the other one until this one was wore out. So I think I actually had another new one of these. So this might be the second bar on here of this lighter duty chain, but that's going to change today. Here is my other saw I use for trim work, which I bought this years ago for grandpa because he was having trouble starting the bigger one and this one's got like a you pull it just barely pull the rope and it spins it like three times faster than what you pull it's supposed to be easy start but I pulled the rope out of it the other day so I'm not too thrilled about that and uh, I told him just order me the whole thing I don't even want to fool with it I think I've already replaced the rope in it once or whatever we'll see but it's useless like this I think it was $100 for the whole assembly just to bolt on. If I can possibly get that figured out and get a rope on it, I might have a spare then, because that's not the first time this is messed up. Uh, but anyway, this one I've had a longer time, uh, and I've already done what I'm about to do to that one, to this one, which is use the bigger width bar, and then you can put the yellow chain on, which is a lot more aggressive. So that's what we're going to do. You can see the differences in the bar, how much more narrow and stuff they are. So the old deer store up in town is actually a steel dealer. So that's just where I go to get stuff. But yeah. So this is gonna go on there like there, see? And then it'll get more aggressive chain. And then hopefully it'll be a woodcutting demon, and that's what we're after. So no, long story short, while the bar is upside down, the chain was not upside down. That would affect the cutting zero. You can run it either way. It's just, yeah, it's not going to have the words printed the right way, you know. They should probably print it backwards on one side of it so that when you flip it over and look at it from the thing, you know. But who cares is what I'm saying. I just want it to cut. So we'll use the handy dandy thing they gave us here, which is gonna be hard to do one-handed here. I probably cut more wood than the average, you know, person, because <laughs> that's what I heat everything with. So I try to keep parts on hand of things. I know I've got extras of these because I lost some one time. 
and there's nothing special about the thread it's just if you want it to fit the factory tool it would be a lot nicer to you know have the right stuff and we need to clean this up before we put it back together I usually do not let them get quite that messy because if we clean all this up it should work better for us is the moral of the story the only bad thing about this I bought this little saw for trimming and the only bad thing about it is which I see is already <laughs> we're gonna probably be addressing that at some point too buying a piece of plastic housing it does not have a metal uh, set of teeth here it's plastic and that is no good for nobody see I wonder if you can can you put one on there because this one has hmm we might have to investigate that maybe it was able to be done the whole time and I just never did it it's in front of this though where it bolts in and I don't see that on there well there hmm I might oughta checked into that before it got destroyed but we'll do that the next go round after we destroy this side of the housing and we gotta replace it we'll we'll address it then it's fine this saw typically does not do the heavy heavy cutting because I've got that 290 which I use for that the farm boss see this one uh, I guess if you want to go along with <laughs> white and Oliver theme this one is a wood boss and the big one is a farm boss so we still have boss around here even though it's not the same sort of thing mm -hmm. I get a rag and wipe this off and then we'll continue on our way yeah we're gonna probably be replacing this side cover at some point because it's starting to get pretty war but that is neither here nor there that's gonna be fine I guess we should clean the cover too covers pretty nasty that's probably good enough for who it's for right there now it even has a little picture so you don't forget that the little thingamabobs point forward when you're done and I think it also shows it on the bar it does right there get in there we probably need to loosen this quite a lot the adjuster on this one is here some of them are down through the center but this one's in the end Sometimes this is a trick. I don't really know how to do it with holding a camera, but we'll get it snug and then we'll tighten it up. I don't know what the rule is on tightening chains, but I like to have them about in this neighborhood here. Grandpa, I think, always let them run a little too loose, but I don't know. You want them, you don't want them so tight that they're really, you know, dragging on the bar and whatever. But you also don't want them so loose that while you're cutting, they can jump out beside it, you know. So you got to do some maintenance because they will loosen up as you use them. But we can see the difference now in profile of... Well, maybe we can. Of our... It's not that... This bar is not wore that much, but it's a different profile of bar. But you can see the difference in size as far as 
thickness and everything goes. The width of the channel is different than this one. And uh, I don't know, this is where they wear out a lot for me. It gets too thin at the end of it. And then this little star wheel will lock up or, or the chain will actually wedge in there and stop. See that right there is worn enough. You could cut your finger on it just about. So that's pretty well where, where she wears the worst for me. And then also, if you run it long enough, <laughs> it'll get toward this channel. It'll get pinched by the wood because it's so thin. And then it'll lock up the chain in there that way. So, But anyway, it served its purpose. I got my use out of this one. So we will run with the new one now. And there she be. So that should do a good job for us of cutting. And usually what it'll do is this type of chain will sling wood chips and that's what I like. I don't like, you know, powder. I want big chunks of stuff out. I don't know if we can tell the, if I can hold these next to each other. But we can see the difference in profile of the teeth, you know much much larger on the uh, one we just put on and those that change pretty well wore out you can see it's pretty well almost gone but yeah like I said we got our use out of it hopefully they can get me that recoil assembly and we'll get that one going too because it's a little bit bigger it's a that's a 180c this is a 170 and I got that 290, which I haven't used yet this year, but I should probably fire it up too because it works good for cutting, you know, big logs and stuff. But the weight is what I'm after. You get tired of lugging that huge saw around all the time if you're just trimming little stuff and you don't need it. So that's why I got all these different sizes, you know. And uh, I have my great grandpa's big home light and I had it running one time just to see if it would run and it will, but it's got the recoils messed up on it too. I need to work on it sometime and get it going. But uh, talk about a horse, that thing is a monster. I mean, you definitely would know after cutting with it all day because it is heavy. I mean, I think it weighs more than all three of the saws I've got here put together. And uh, I'm sure they thought it was great because it was great technology a lot better than hand cutting, but my gosh, it's a heavy horse. We can go look at it. Let me see if we can, let's pick up some of this garbage here and uh, we'll go take a look at that old one. I guess before we do that, here's the, here's the bigger one of these. Farm boss. There you go. But anyway, I've had that one the longest. That was the first steel saw I bought. And man, I have not regretted that. It's been a good one. It's very dirty. It needs probably some tune-up attention. I actually would like to get, <laughs> and people think that's crazy, but I'd like to get one that's about three sizes bigger than that and put this bar on it. And I think then you'd really have a wood cutting horse because you'd have way more motor than you had bar and uh, yeah so that's in my plan sometime in the future but who knows when okay where are you there you are I don't know if I can even get to it <laughs> I have it hanging on the wall but there it is a 420 home light and it is a horse I mean, look at how wide that bar is. I should have brought, I do have the other bar we just took off. There we go. All right, so for example, comparison, <laughs> here's the width of our old bar. And can you see how wide the, the original of this thing was? Of course, it's a bigger saw, but still, that thing's a horse. And like I said, I had it running one time, but the recoil doesn't do recoil things anymore. So that is on my list. And check out this chain. I mean, look at how aggressive that chain is. That's monster chain. So I wanna get that going because I think it'd be fun to, you know, saw up a tree with it or something just to say I did. 
but it's a cool thing to have on the shelf it's in great shape really i mean it's still got a lot of color on it but uh yeah it is heavy i mean when you're using it you know so and it has such a deep tone i wonder what the <laughs> i wonder how big the piston is in it because you can tell i'd say it'll suck the fuel down but at any rate that's what i know about that this one i think is a gear reduction saw where it has like you know this is a gear case and uh yeah some of them are like that so anyway i need to be hunting for parts for that and see what i can find but at least now it's on record so i don't forget what the model number is and i can be hunting for that stuff well the gopro battery died so i had to get one that's almost dead because i wasn't a very good boy and i forgot to plug them in but i was happily filming for no reason and what I was going to say is, when you do something like this, make sure you try it and make sure it's oiling. So what I did, I like hold it against here and rev it up and watch it and it'll spray oil on the side. We can do that again with you watching maybe. And then you can see what I'm talking about. Right. It probably even covered the camera lens. I didn't think of that a little bit yeah but anyway you want to make sure it's oiling before you go out and cut with it or you're gonna have sad times so that one's ready to go so we'll put its little happy cover back on that one we can't do nothing about but I think we ought to try to start this one because it's been a while see we need to make some more gas too at some point I've been trying to use up what I got left over. I think I mix, mixed this batch this winter, but that doesn't keep very good. So a lot of times people got problems with their saws or whatever. It's bad gas. Uh, that's too much. This one's made different. It's got this different style gas cap and it's gonna overflow it. Yep. The heavier saws are made a little different and with good reason they're made to be a lot more serviceable than the smaller ones where you don't have to replace every piece i bought another uh jug of this bar oil too while i was in town we may be breaking it out for this because i don't know if this is gonna get it not quite that's good though because i didn't want to have to carry around this half empty jug or whatever so we'll get the new bottle and top that off and some guys are going to say oh you could have gone to the dollar store and bought i buy the factory stuff that way they can't say that you know i did something wrong and that's why my stuff wore out i buy their stuff let's spill it because i guarantee you i'll make a mess now yep All right, fly that back there. If you can't tell, I'm a firm believer in the steel chainsaws. I like them. Part of it is probably because of, or is the writing? I think it was on this one we just put on. Right there. If it was made in Germany, it's probably good stuff. Although a lot of these are also made in the USA, their stuff. This bar says made in USA. That chain's loose. So that's a good example of what I was talking about earlier. I'm trying to balance it here on inappropriate stuff. But if you let it go too loose, then it can do sideways stuff in the thing and be eaten out on the side. This bar's gotten real hot along the edge at some point. It's probably about due for a replacement on this one too. Probably about due to flip it over, but we'll tighten it up and go again. Maybe we will. And I think this one, 
I think the adjuster is down through the center. Is it? Can't remember. Yeah, it's down in there, so. This old saw has cut a lot of wood. But I try not to leave them sit outside. And even though it's dirty, I try to take care of them, believe it or not. All right. All right, buddy boy. It's my experience that after they've sat a while, you do have to pull on them a lot, but it, uh, <laughs> once you've used, when you're using them every day, they start pretty good. Typically just flip it down to choke until it fires and then let her eat. So yeah, that's that for probably four or five months and it fired right up. So you can't complain about the quality of these saws. Maybe people think, oh, they're so much more expensive. You can go to the home center or to the farm store and buy a saw for $2.99 or whatever. Well, those are garbage, friends. I'll tell you that for a fact. Part of what led me to these was I was fed up with those home center saws. We had a... Uh, a big blue home light was the one that we had and then something happened to it it locked up on me while i was sawing wood in town a uh, tree blew down in somebody's yard in town a big tree and they said you could have the firewood for free if you saw it up so you know the hard part was done getting the tree to the ground all i had to do is sit there and saw it up throw the pieces on the trailer and i sawed for several hours and it finally gave up the ghost grandpa bought a what was that saw that he bought he bought a cheapo saw and then i i found one actually that a store was going to throw away because they said it wouldn't run and it was a poland and i got it running and those things are garbage it was nice that it uh it was low vibration i mean everything was like but it was all plastic it was lightweight anyway those two saws they just didn't have it and then whatever happened <laughs> i can't remember how that happened one day but i remember that it happened i don't know if he had them in the bucket of that john deere and we were going to the woods and somehow they bounced out and they both went underwater <laughs> and they never did want to perform after that so you know i and then i got them going and one day we were cutting a tree that was a pretty good sized tree for nowadays it was probably 24 inch tree in diameter or so and you were sawing and sawing and sawing with these little saws and they just they wouldn't do it and i was over it you know and he did not want to spend money on whatever so i bought it went to the town and bought this and i thought i don't even care what it costs i'm buying this so i bought this saw and brought it home and that tree that he'd been sawing on forever to try to get it one cut made took this right next to it room all the way through no problem it's like butter so I went right back to town the next day and I bought the smaller one, that 180, I believe. And uh, actually, I did. I bought that 180, and that is the second 180 that we've had because the first one that I bought with this one, he had a problem where he couldn't get it to run. I don't know what he did to it. And I finally, I said, I'm, I don't have patience to work on these. I said, take it into the store and let them figure it out. Well. At that time, they said, oh my gosh, that saw is already like 11 years old. That tells you how old the, <laughs> this is here. But uh, they said, it's not worth doing. I said, we'll just trade you for a new one. And that's what they did. So that's the second one of those. And then a few years later, I got tired of that easy start thing all the time. I don't like the way it feels when you try to start it and whatever. And So I bought this one. And then that way, you know, when he was using this one, 
if, if it got messed up, I still had one that size to use. But I kind of wish now I, I should have bought a, I should have bought a little bit bigger one or something, or I don't know, so that it was a little bit heavier made with the replaceable parts, but it does the job. So we'll get that one fixed. I do like to cut with it when it runs, but we got to get that fixed where it'll actually run. And you can tell I've replaced this side cover once before. I think I've replaced the rope in it once before. And I'm not entirely sure that this was a factory part. This might have been a Chinesium part. And then I popped the thing out and stuck it on this one. So today I ordered the factory thing. And that's what's going to happen. Maybe I did that last time. I don't remember. But at any rate, when we get that, then that one will run too. That one, though, is ready. It's cut a lot of wood, too, because I've replaced that side cover once. I've replaced the carburetor on it. So I might have replaced the coil in it, too. Uh, but like I said, they get used. They got used a lot more than average Joe homeowner would use a saw, you know, as you can tell from my paint wear and stuff on that bar. That's cut a lot of trees. So hopefully... They're ready to go now. I can get this load of stuff dumped out. Probably just pull the pin and flip it over backwards till it falls out. <laughs> and then we'll go back out there to the tree line and start cutting. Because, yeah, we got work to do, you know? Like I said, I want to get most of that fence line cleaned up where it's easier to maintain with the, the little sprayer uh, later on. It's already starting to grow. I mean, I've been trying to hold off cutting grass because I hate the idea of cutting grass so early, but it's getting to where it needs to be cut now. So we're going to have to get our mower ready and go with that. And then, uh, geez, along the road, it's already grown enough. We could probably take that sickle mower out and trim the road edges, which means we got to make a new pitman because it broke last year at the end of the year. But I was thinking about that uh, a while ago. I think that 1550 is about as good ready to go as it's ever been because we did both tires on it axle seals so if we get that mower fixed up it should be ready to to go work all summer we need to put our woods mower back together so we can maintain pasture and stuff that's another thing that we never got back to but it needs some welding done on it while we're that far apart so that's what's holding me up there but anyway the moral of the story is my blade was not upside down. If your bar wears out, you can flip it over and go again. So take that for what it's worth. And I guess we'll leave this one here. Do you enjoy seeing a basic white man in his middle 30s struggling at life? If so, hit that thumbs up and leave us a comment because all of that stuff is supposed to help us out and grow the channel and we can keep making more stuff like what you just saw. As always, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.